Welcome and aloha. I am Mark Shklov, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going across the sea to New Delhi, India, to talk with Ravi Nath, who is the managing partner of the law firm of Rohinder, Narin, and Company, also known as RN Legal. Ravi is a very experienced international attorney with great expertise in aviation and aerospace law. I met and became friends with Ravi through our mutual membership in the Inter-Pacific Bar Association. I've asked Ravi to talk with us today about the past, the present, and the future of India, and also what gives him hope for that future. Welcome, Ravi. It's good to see you. How are you? Thank you, Mark. Lovely to see you again. Great. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you. being my guest today. Um, Ravi, uh, first I'd like to put up a map of India so we can kind of focus on where we are. You're in India now, sure. you're in New Delhi, is that correct? I'm sitting in New Delhi, the capital of India, which you see with a red dot on that mark, uh, no, on that map. And um, so um, Delhi has a population of nearly about 20 million people. So you can imagine it's a large city. Wow. Yes, I am in the yeah. And, and you're the you're yeah, you're and, and you are India is uh in the middle of a whole bunch of other countries too around it. Um, and I understand, Ravi, that India celebrated 75 years of independence from Britain in August. And I wanted to ask you first to tell us what is the history uh, behind that celebration? What does that day in history mean to the people of India? And how was the 75th anniversary of independence celebrated in India? So please, I know that's a lot of questions for you at once, but tell us what, what, is, what, what is this independence day in India? Thank you. 75 years ago in 1947, uh, India gained independence from the British rule. They left after about 200 years. And uh, the handover was on the 15th of August, 1947. One day before that, 14th of August, uh, Another nation which had been carved out of India uh, called Pakistan. Pakistan got its independence on the 14th of August and India on the 15th. 75 years have gone by and uh, we, we now celebrate certain achievements uh, in this country. We now celebrate our independence and we now celebrate uh, and we now look forward to what is to come. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, how we celebrated this is we, uh, you know, there was a speech by the prime minister from the Red Fort. Uh, it, in, in, in which he addressed the nation and he, he he briefly dwelt on the history and but more he dwelt on what is to come what the plans are and uh, how uh, they will be achieved for instance uh, we have already achieved a literacy rate in india of 75% at the time when the British left 75 years ago, the literacy rate was 12%. Mm. And uh, there are other successes uh, and achievements in terms of health, in terms of education, in terms of infrastructure development, in terms of our space program, uh, in terms of our medicine. At, at the time of COVID, uh, you know, a huge vaccination program was uh, taken up, and India became India became virtually 
uh, I mean, everyone, every uh, every adult was inoculated or rather double inoculated within a short space of time. So if you go down the streets of uh, Delhi or uh, any other city, you would hardly notice that there was COVID at some point of time here in India. Wow, that, that's amazing. And uh, is that what is called the report card on India? Is that is that what the prime minister yes. was talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, partially. Uh, there are other achievements, uh, you know, to be sure. What, what, are, what uh, type of achievements? What, what is the report card? What, 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 uh, what did, are the grades that <laughs> India got on the report card? We have a, um, what is it that the common man needs? housing, clothing, food, education, and I will add to that transport, right? In all those five areas, uh, we can be proud of our achievement. Now, when the British left, India's share of the uh, world trade was 3%. Now it is 8%. Uh, so as I mentioned, India's population, I perhaps did not mention population. We are now 1.4 billion people. Soon we will overtake China. Wow. We have uh, not managed to provide housing for all, but nearly for all. Of course, there's housing but there's not the kind of housing that you would like to provide. Education has become compulsory. Children must go to school and, and at school they're provided with lunch. And uh, of course, whatever, uh, whatever they require to get ahead. We have uh, uh, clothing, of course, there has never ever been problem. India has one of the largest uh, uh, clothing, uh, uh, I mean, largest uh, cloth producing countries. Medicine, healthcare. Uh, it's, uh, we have provided, we have managed to provide healthcare. Uh, quite a bit of improvement, but there's still some ground to be covered. Uh, India is uh, known as the, um, how shall I say, uh, maker of medicine to the world because we are producing an enormous amount of uh, medicines which are being exported. A vaccine is the largest producer of vaccine in the world. And that is how we were able to vaccinate against COVID. But we have gone beyond that. And I'd like to take being lawyers or being a lawyer myself, I would like to take uh, 30 seconds to tell you about uh, something which is very close to my heart. Constitution of India, which is perhaps the longest constitution in the world, which draws inspiration from the United States Constitution, from the Swiss Constitution, uh, from the United Kingdom, which is unwritten, of course, uh, and so on, from, from really five constitutions. It has a chapter which is called Fundamental Rights. And those rights are inalienable. Those rights are such that you can go directly to our highest court, the Supreme Court, if, if, if any of those rights are breached. One of those rights is called the right to life. That's Article 21 in our Constitution. The Supreme Court has widened the scope of the right to life. The court has held that right to life does not mean just simply existing like an animal. Right to life means right to live a decent life as a human being, which means what? Which, uh, yeah, which, which means that right to be left alone, right not to be disturbed by unnecessary noise or air pollution, and so on. So you can imagine that how the scope of that right to life 
uh, has been expanded and is continually being expanded and the courts enforce it. So I want to mention one thing in particular, if I may take another 20 seconds in doing so. In the recently concluded uh, Glasgow conference on COP, environmental conference, India has pledged that it will go to zero emission by the year 2077. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, have, uh, we have already taken considerable steps towards it. We've got a fair bit of uh, hydropower, uh, nuclear power as well, um, wind power and uh, you know these alternate source sun, so on. Yeah, so that's okay. what I wanted. Okay, so, so it sounds like you, you've achieved a lot, India has achieved a lot, it also has a lot of goals for the future. Uh, and are there things that have not worked out so well? Are there, are there grades yeah. that are not passing? Yeah. Yes. What, what type of grades would that be and what subjects are we talking about? Well, uh, there, are, uh, there are miles to go and miles to go before I sleep. And so said Robert Frost. You know, he said, woods are lovely, dark and deep, and there are miles to go and miles to go before I sleep. So uh, what we have still to do and what we are doing is achieving some sort of social equality. Uh, 80 percent of India's population is Hindu. About 15 percent is Muslim and 5 percent is a mixture of Christians and, and Parsis and uh, 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 there's a sprinkling of Jewish population and others. Now, what we want to bring about is homogeneity. What we want to bring about is remove the differences in the personal laws of parties. That will take some time. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing that we have yet to achieve is housing for all. Housing meaning a, um, a, a housing of, of the kind that, uh, that, uh, that, that we understand it to be, that is uh, proper, uh, uh, strong structure, uh, and not just simply a mud hut. Uh, so that we are on the way to achieving, we have done considerable work on that. What are the, what are the areas? The third area that, that I feel that some more work needs to be done is law enforcement and justice delivery. Justice delivery system of ours is not as efficient as it should be. So it takes a long time. Sometimes it takes a long time for uh, cases to be decided. And there, what we are trying to do is increase the number of courts and judges and uh, uh, shall I say, sharpen the saw. By, by that I mean that we, we have, uh, we'll have more of uh, 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 mediation and arbitration and conciliation kind of proceedings so that the courts uh, do not get clogged with uh, small causes. Those are a few areas. Okay, all right. So uh, those are areas where I, I can see uh, they're almost universal in a way because we, we also have similar I issues here. Uh, and so we're all kind of wor working towards the same direction. Now, I wanna go back to history a little bit uh, and you know, you get got your independence from Britain, and uh, what is uh, what is the relate? And, and then in Pakistan also got independent at this about the same time. What is the India's relationship with United Kingdom and Pakistan now? What are they? Are they friendly? Are they animosity? Is there resentment towards Britain? Is there friendship with Pakistan? What? Where does India stand, or, or is it somewhere in between? 
that's a very relevant and a very good question mark. <laughs> um, British, or shall I say English, left after about 200 years of uh, rule. There were uh, some good things. There were quite a lot of bad things as well. Uh, but at the end of the day, when they left, and until today, there is a feeling of friendliness towards each other. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> we are cooperating with the United Kingdom in a number of areas. <clears throat> and it is not just uh, on the rebound after Brexit. It has existed all these number of years. And that is why uh, you, you see so many joint ventures in India and Indian business houses buying up uh, so many of British icons, even Jaguar Land Rover, for instance, that is in, uh, that is in Indian hands. And there are a number of other British companies. Hmm. Now, that is, that is not, not just buying or taking over, but it's a collaboration that's going on. Education, uh, higher education uh, for higher education, there's a lot of interchange between India and United Kingdom, more towards United Kingdom, where our students go to, you know, study. Uh, and, uh, but there are also uh, exchanges the other way around. Uh, this is going on, has been going on for the past 75 years, and I don't see it letting up. Pakistan. Uh, <clears throat> The situation in Pakistan or situation with Pakistan is this, that uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh were a part of India during British time and for times immemorial. This was all one country. Uh, when the time of independence came, uh, the leaders the Muslim leaders wanted a separate nation which, which they wanted to be Islamic. India, on the other hand, chose the path of um, a secular, you know, being a secular nation. That is, that there's no state-sponsored religion. And uh, so what happened was that the British could not help the help it and they had to carve two parts of India out. One was called West Pakistan, which is now today Pakistan, and the other called East Pakistan, which is today Bangladesh. Now the two Pakistans uh, drew away from each other. The, there was a war and Bangladesh as a nation was born. So Bangladesh is an independent nation and Pakistan, what used to be West Pakistan, is just simply called Pakistan. The, the, the problem that India and Pakistan have is mainly over Kashmir. If you see the northern tip of India or the northern, if you, if you, if you look at the map, you'll see at the northern point, Kashmir, right, right up there uh, between Pakistan and China that uh, you know you might call that the head of india and the rest of it uh, if you were to regard as the body so yeah that that one now <clears throat> pakistan felt that uh, that the british were wrong in dividing india the way that they had done and that uh, kashmir belongs to them so they started marching into kashmir and the indian army was airlifted and they stemmed that they stopped the Pakistani army from, uh, you know, in its track. But by that time, they had already covered one third of Pakistan, the one third of Kashmir. And that is where the matters rest, have rested for, for the past about uh, 70 years. So uh, 
one third of Kashmir is occupied by Pakistan. They don't call it occupied, of course. They call mm -hmm. it as a part of India. Mm -hmm. And the balance two thirds is with India. And Pakistan feels that India has occupied the two thirds. And uh, so, but that's, uh, that is their perception. So, but if one were to look at the articles and one were to look at the agreement, uh, Kashmir was a part of India. So, arising from that, that is the genesis of the problem. Arising from that, India and Pakistan have gone to war with each other three times. Wow, so that's a bit of history. Uh, may, you know, why, why can't people get along, right? Um, now, let me ask you, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who, who is he? And what is, what is, his, what, what is his vision of, the, of India for the future? Again, a very relevant and good question because uh, Prime Minister Modi is regarded as a very dynamic uh, leader of India. Somebody who, uh, who India needs at this point of time. He is an inspirational leader. He comes from the state of Gujarat. Uh, that is where Mahatma Gandhi came from. Mm. And uh, he uh, uh, worked his way through the ranks, became the chief minister of the state of Gujarat and ultimately the prime minister of India. And he has led the country ever since. Uh, he has... Uh, uh, <clears throat> his party is called BJP. Bharatiya Janta Party, to give us a long name. And uh, uh, you'll be surprised that uh, you'll be surprised with his origin. He used to be a tea seller at a railway station. Wow. So it's almost like, uh, uh, you know, Lincoln's story. Can you imagine? That um, you that that uh, that that Indian democracy, Indian principles, allows that to happen. Mm. And uh, so today, he is the leader of the country, respected around the world. And I, uh, I had no idea uh, he, he he was a tea seller, uh, you know, at a station. I had no idea. Wow. And he's up there with all the ma major leaders of the world. Amazing. He, he is a mesmerizing speaker. Oh. But that's not all. You know, it comes from within. Uh, if you hear uh, his uh, speech on India's 75th anniversary, you will you'll know what I mean. He, uh, you know, it's not as if, uh, you know, somebody is telling him or teaching him what to say. No, it's there within him. I mean, I, I, you know, there are people, of course, as it happens in politics, there are criticisms to be sure. There are people who say that, look, you're espousing Hinduism. And uh, this is something which is, which is not accepted in a secular nation. Those are, those are some of the accusations against him. Well, there's, there's still, there still is some <laughs> dissension and, and there still is some differing views, I see. Now, you, you mentioned Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, and I, I wanted to ask, you know, how is he viewed in India today? And what is his legacy? What is Mahatma Gandhi's l legacy now in India? How, and, and what do pe people in India think of him? Let me take five seconds or 10 to just uh, give you a little snapshot. Mahatma Gandhi, uh, whose uh, birthday is celebrated on the 2nd of October, which is a national holiday, is called Father of the Nation. And uh, he uh, gave to the world the message of nonviolence that how you can achieve what you want to achieve by nonviolence. Uh, the history uh, has it that it is his nonviolence that made the British leave India. 
it was not as if Indians had to fight a battle to achieve independence. No, it was not like that. There are many people, many world leaders who were influenced by him. Um, um, I mean, in Ireland, in South Africa, Nelson Mandela, uh, for instance, is, I mean, you know, they, 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 you know, Gandhi is regarded as, as a, you know, as a, as a leader uh, of nonviolence. He was, um, he lived very simply. He lived extremely simply, I would say. Uh, he kind of lived like a man who has no money. You know, he would travel. Uh, once, a, once a journalist asked him a question that, Mr. Gandhi, why do you always travel the third class in the railways? And he answered very sweetly, oh, that's because there's no fourth class. <laughs> so, you know, that's how simply, uh, you know, he, he, he lived. And he would always wear a lion cloth, the one that he's famous for. So um, after a meeting you know, in London, he was, uh, you know, in the course of which he was uh, invited to meet the king. And after the meeting, he comes out of the palace and he's surrounded by reporters, one of whom asks him, Mr. Gandhi, did you go and see the king emperor wearing that? He said, yes, you know, the king emperor was wearing enough clothes for the two of us. <laughs> Oh, that's you great. Know, he, he, what a sense of humor. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He had a sense of humor. But he was also a leader. And he actually um, tried to prevent uh, a division of India between Pakistan and, uh, and, uh, and what is India. But he did not succeed in that. And, and what was his uh, profession before he... Uh came back to India. He, he was uh, in law, right? Yes. He was qualified as a barrister in London. And uh, then he went to uh, Africa, South Africa to practice law. Uh, so as a barrister, he practiced law and saw the discrimination. Those were, remember, those were the days of apartheid, uh, the whites and the colored. And uh, whilst he was insulted, in that respect, and uh, he was in fact thrown out of the first class railway compartment as a barrister. He was properly dressed and so forth, and the uh, and the ticket collector said, "This does not belong to you." And, uh, but but all that is something that he took in his stride. But somehow he was propelled from that point onward to become a leader. And uh, then he sort of, he said that I'm going back to my country and I want to live the way that the poorest you know, in India live so that I can understand their problems. You know, well, that, that actually speaks well for lawyers, doesn't it? Maybe, uh, maybe we lawyers can provide some uh, uh, solutions and some hope. But let me, let me ask you that. We got a lot of problems in the world today. Uh, there's, uh, the, well, there was COVID, uh, the, pan the pandemic, and then there was, you know, c problems with the climate and hurricanes, and we got wars everywhere, and you, you still have problems in Pakistan and India. Is there anything that gives you hope for the future? Are there any, and are there any Indian cultural words of wisdom that you can share with us that provide some guidance on how to live life, the best life. You know, Indian civilization huh. is more than 5,000 years old. And there is, uh, there is quite a lot of philosophy and quite a lot, of, uh, quite a lot to imbibe. Uh, there is a book called Gita. And uh, this Gita is one part of a Hindu epic called Mahabharat. It is full of wisdom. Uh, very difficult for me to say as to what message 
India can give, but I can, you know, I'll give you just two words, which uh, which our Prime Minister has 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 coined. He says, "Sabka saath, sabka vikas." We all together, and we all will progress. We together, and we all progress. That is what it is. But going further, a little bit further into philosophy, um, you know, it is uh, really just uh, about this, that do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Okay. One part. I, I appreciate those words. And what you're also saying is that people People can be the solution if they think the right way, if they act the right way and uh, become friends uh, as you and I have. And so I appreciate those words of wisdom uh, and doing things together. Yes, I, I can really see that. I mean, that's how the Inter-Pacific Bar Association, for example, when, when we get people, lawyers like Gandhi, all from all over the world getting together and doing good things. Yeah, that I, that makes a lot of sense to me. So thank you so much, Ravi Nath, for being my guest today and sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and expertise. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. I enjoyed talking to you. And I look forward to seeing you again at, uh, in the See future soon. when we travel more. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.